You know they say never employ your friends or never work with kids and animals. Well, they should also say never let your property to a landlord because landlords make the worst tenants. Well, maybe not the worst tenants, but landlords certainly don't make the best tenants. So I'm gonna give you two stories of two completely different tenants that are both landlords. They rent their properties from two completely different landlords, but both of them have become problems. I think because they're landlords. I'd be interested to hear what you think about this. Tenant number one moved into a property a year ago and is a landlord themselves. Now they've moved out of their home and they rented that home out and they moved into a rented property because it was closer to their kids' school, so it was all about moving into a better location. So they've been in this property for 12 months, and during that 12 months, they were constantly late on the rent, every single month. Sometimes they missed a payment, sometimes they were just late, sometimes they were really late, but every single month, there was a problem paying the rent. During that time, the landlord continuously, as they should, chased the rent, pursued the landlord, but also just tried to resolve the problem. Just try to find out if there's a way that we can work this out so that the rent is paid on time, but no success. That tenant kept on paying late, kept on missing rent payments until they've fallen so far into arrears that the landlord had to issue a section eight notice. A section eight notice is where you give the tenant two weeks notice to leave because of serious arrears. The tenant then said, well, I'll just pay off the arrears so that it brings it below two months and then you won't be able to issue me a section eight. And the landlord, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll just pay the arrears and then you can stay. So the tenant paid off just enough to bring it below two months of arrears and then the section eight was no longer required. But then the tenant carried on being late and carried on missing payments, but then keeping it just below the two month mark. And the landlord issued a section 21 notice, which is a standard eviction notice where you get two months to vacate the property. The tenant comes back to the landlord and says, well, fine, I'm not paying any rent then and I'm gonna go and seek legal advice. You'll have to take me to court. <sighs> And that's ongoing now. And it seems like this tenant understands that they've got an amount of time where they don't have to pay the rent technically because it's gonna to go to court and the landlord's gonna suffer through that time. And it's really difficult for that landlord and really frustrating and unfair how somebody can live their life in that way, especially a parent. That tenant's got children. What sort of example are you setting for your children? Terrible. Anyway. Tenant number two is slightly different, moved into a property and this tenant has learning difficulties. That's fine, no problems with that. In this case, the mother is the guardian for the tenant. And that means that the mother has to be included in all communication, all inspections, all visits, all anything, any maintenance that's required or any repairs, any contractors that are going around, the mother has to be present because the tenant has learning difficulties. However, it must be pointed out that this tenant has always paid the rent, looked after the property, had never caused any issues whatsoever. Now in this instance, the landlord wanted possession of the property because they wanted to fully refurbish the property. They felt that the property had fallen into a state of disrepair, not because of the tenant, the tenant had looked after it, adequately, but because the landlord felt that they could improve the property to a level where they could make it more valuable, both for property value, mortgage values, and rent values. A very fair thing to do. Now, it's not very nice for the tenant, I definitely agree, but the landlord is within their rights to do that at the moment. That may change in the future, but right now the landlord is allowed to do that. So, the landlord issued a section 21 notice. The mother, who is also a landlord herself, then contested the section 21 notice and argued it and argued and argued and argued. Then she went directly to the landlord's house and argued and argued and argued. Then her partner came with her and argued and argued and argued. They were emailing her, phoning her, visiting her constantly, this poor landlord, to argue 
with this eviction. Then they started threatening legal action because this landlord didn't really get it. It's just, it's a, this landlord's only property. The landlord didn't really understand what trouble they could be in by processing this eviction. And that one is still ongoing. Now, in both of those cases, it does favor the tenant a bit. Now, eventually you can evict the tenant. Eventually you'll go through that process and you can evict the tenant. We can talk about morals. We can talk about right and wrong, good practice, bad practice. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about the tenants and the landlords. The tenants are landlords and the landlords are landlords, obviously. And I'm talking about how this is impacting the landlord, but also how landlords in these cases are not making very good tenants for the landlords. So I don't know what you make of that, but the rule is, you know they say don't employ friends, you know they say don't work with animals and kids, and you know they say now, never let a landlord rent your property from you.